What's going on guys? Welcome back to Black Tide TV. Score streak challenges in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. They're not exactly difficult, but they're certainly time consuming. For example, pilot license, spend 10 minutes piloting the AP-3X. Walking tank, absorb 5,000 damage with your shield when controlling the RC-8. On top of those, almost every single lethal score streak in this game requires you get 50 kills with each of them. These things take a long time, so you bet your ass that like many other players in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, I'm abusing the Drop Zone playlist right now to finish all of my challenges. Now, a lot of YouTubers have been singing Drop Zone's praises, myself included, in a video featured earlier this week. In said video, I discussed how easy it is to complete score streak challenges with Drop Zone because the care packages come in and you can just grab them up. You don't have to do anything to actually earn these score streaks. It's super easy to get your challenges done. It's super easy. It's super fun. It's a really great lighthearted game mode. But as I started playing it, I started to notice this colossal, colossal flaw, and that is that care packages, or drone packages, as Infinite Warfare likes to refer to them as, are broken. You cannot secure a drone package the same way that you could secure care packages in previous Call of Duty games. I feel like in previous Call of Duty games, care packages had more weight to them. They wouldn't move around once they came in. They dropped into a certain area, and they more or less stayed in that area for a good amount of time. In Infinite Warfare, drone packages seem to be weightless. They land and they can be moved by bumping into them, by being shot by bullets, by being hit by explosives. They can be moved at a whim. And this disrupts the owner's ability to secure that care package. If you haven't noticed yet, maybe you haven't been playing a lot of Drop Zone or maybe you haven't been jumping into the Drop Zone trying to secure packages, but more often than not, you'll run into areas where care packages are just not securable. They just move around too much, and every time they move, the player character will drop square or drop X. Whatever your action button is, whatever button you use to reload, the button that you use to secure that care package, your player character will drop that button and stop securing the care package, forcing you to start from scratch all over again. And this is not the fault of the player. This is not the player holding the controller, losing their grip on the controller and stopping the holding down of the square button or the X button. I'm going to call it the action button. So say the player is experiencing this explosion. They're not freaking out and losing their grip and dropping the action button. It's the actual in-game character that drops the action button when a care package is moved. This is a huge problem. We should be able to lock on to care packages and secure them because... I've even done this myself when I really wanted a certain care package out of drop zone when I was going for certain challenges, I would just run up and shoot at a care package that one of my teammates or one of the enemies is trying to take and it would just move a little bit and knock them off course. They would not be able to secure that care package and then I ran up and secured it before they could lock onto it again. This is a huge problem. This is not something that I've ever seen before in a Call of Duty game. I don't ever remember this happening in any previous Call of Duties. I feel like it's because the drone package is so light. You can just knock it over. You can literally jump on it and it will move. Not to mention that especially in Drop Zone, these care packages or drone packages will fly in and land in very heavily populated player areas. So they'll often land on debris, such as previous players' weapons, previous players' bodies, and other pieces of equipment, things like that sort, and they will land lopsided. And if you go to secure those care packages, they will start to slide if you bump into them too much. And as they slide, every time they move a fraction of an inch, you're gonna lose square, you're gonna lose X, you're gonna lose your action button, and you won't be able to secure those. You more or less have to knock all of the care packages down off the debris, out of the way, before you try to secure them, or it's never going to happen. It's very difficult, it's very frustrating when you go and you see that AP3X, that Apex, and it's sitting there, and you're like, yes, I'm gonna grab this Apex, and you run up and you start securing it and someone will shoot that care package you'll be taking fire not you personally but the care package will be taking fire and you won't be able to secure that care package say the enemy is employing a very smart tactic to blanket the drop zone with grenades so they're chucking grenades at the drop zone it's a great tactic it keeps you from securing care packages but you're fine you've got the blast shield perk you're good, you can secure that care package without a care in the world, but that explosion might impact the care package and move the care package, giving the enemy team time to get into that drop zone themselves and shoot at you rather than using grenades on your body. So it's just a pain in the ass. Every single time you go to secure a care package, 
it can be disrupted and that will ruin your entire drop zone experience. Let me tell you, when this happens to you enough, once you've noticed this, it will drive you nuts. You will think at first that, oh, I'm just dropping square. Like I personally am just losing my grip on the square button, the X button, the action button, and I am not... I don't know, a good enough player to keep holding on to that button. Maybe my hands are too sweaty. Maybe I'm slipping off the button. Maybe the pressure sensor in my controller isn't exactly up to par. It's not up to snuff. The controller isn't charged all the way, so the sensors aren't actuating at a full capacity. Maybe there's something just going on there. It's not a big deal. I'll be able to secure the care package next time. But that's not the case. And when you notice that that is not the case and it's actually the game's fault that you cannot secure care packages, it will drive you nuts and you will not want to play Drop Zone anymore. I've been playing Drop Zone the last couple of times, not even going for care packages, just for gameplay. It's just because I can run around and shoot people in the back when they're trying to secure care packages because I know how difficult it is. I don't even go for the care packages unless they are very special care packages, very exclusive to the challenges that I need. I'm not running and grabbing every care package I can because it's not worth my time and effort because I'll likely not be able to secure them anyways. So I'd really like if Infinity Ward could implement a change to the care packages in this game. And that's not just to drop zone, that's to all care packages in general. There should be a lock on mechanism when you walk up to these care packages and when you're holding square or X or the action button, it should instantly grab onto that care package and stop it from moving. It should not be able to move when you're securing it. It should just lock it on like it's, I don't even know, like it's magnetic or something and you cannot move that care package if your life depended on it. Now, when you drop square or you drop X, you drop the action button and you stop securing it, it should be able to move. I get that. I understand why care packages should be able to move because if they land on debris, if they land on something where they're not exactly supposed to be up there, you can kind of shoot at them and knock them off and put them into the area where they're supposed to be. So I understand why care packages should move, why care packages should be weightless, but still, they should not move when you're trying to secure them, and that is what I really wanted to talk about in today's video. And now as a side topic, I'd like to discuss drone packages when it comes to drop zone exclusively, or more accurately, selfish teammates taking your drone packages when you've earned them more than they have. If you were not aware, the way that drone packages work in drop zone is the first player into the next drop zone, as long as they stay alive, as long as they stay within that hard point within that drop zone, every care package that comes in belongs to that player character. So say I'm the last player on the team. I have been in the drop zone for a total of one second and everybody above me has been in the drop zone for, I don't know, let's say a minute. Even if I've only been in the drop zone for one second, I can enter the next drop zone before it turns. It turns into the next drop zone. Every single care package, as long as I don't die, as long as I don't leave, belongs to me now. Every single one. I can secure them all before any of my teammates can. In fact, as long as I have first dibs, I can secure care packages on top of my teammates. Now, if you're not all the way up to speed in the Call of Duty franchise, this has been a feature for quite some time. If you own the care package, you can actually secure it on top of your teammates. Your teammates might be trying to secure that care package. You can secure it twice as fast and you can secure it at the same time that your teammate is trying to secure it. So it's a great preventative maintenance feature to really keep teammates from stealing care packages. And trust me, I know that there are players in drop zone that run into the drop zone and grab a great streak even though they don't really play the game mode apart from grabbing that one streak and that is a big problem but that's a problem for another day for now we need to talk about care packages in the drop zone and players getting dibs on those care packages because i feel like the dibs system doesn't really work well with the first player that enters the hard point getting dibs on every single care package, it just doesn't make sense because that one player might have just ran into that hard point ahead of time and didn't do anything to help defend the last one, help get any kills. That player might be the worst player on the team and they might just know where the next hard point is or get lucky and land in the next hard point before it changes. That's not, that's not right. The player that gets dibs should be the player that either has the most kills 
or has the most time in the hard point. Now, if I was personally in charge of the drop zone playlist, I would make it so four total players have advanced access to the care packages. Four total players can grab care packages faster and on top of their teammates. And those four players would be two players from each team, one player with the highest amount of kills and the other player with the highest amount of time in the hard point, because these are the players that really are doing the most for the team. These guys are carrying the team. They deserve the care packages more than Joe Blow who walks into the next hard point and gets lucky by grabbing the first care package which happens to be an apex. It should go to the players that really deserve the care packages. Not any random guy, the first guy to get to the next one, the fastest guy. Not really fair like that. But that is all I have for you in today's video. Let me know your thoughts on the drone package problem and the drop zone drone package problem in the comment section down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, if you agree with anything you heard here, and definitely subscribe for more daily gaming goodness. I'll see you guys on the next video.